And now another thing I want to show you is virtual server. Here's a feature that can be used quite creatively. So for example, if we have a web service internally, we can say, okay, we got a web service running on port 80 over here on this computer. But since our ISP will not allow us to listen on port 80, we're going to call that port something else, such as 8080. Then what happens is we're listening on port 8080. Then if somebody wants to access whatever computer we specify over here, they can simply type in our external IP address followed by the colon and then port 8080. Now, since we're creating a rule on our router's external IP using port 8080, well, that frees us up to use port 80 on other rules in our port forwarding application. So as you can see, port forwarding can get rather deep and rather complex. But if you at least understand the basics of what I'm showing you here, when things start to go wrong, you'll at least have an idea why and you'll be able to easily figure out how to proceed from there.